forever. Uh, you realize that you hold the office for just a small part of our history, so you better make the most of it. It's fleeting. And that inspires you to do big things. And on that score, I think we have achieved a heck of a lot. You all know that I did not seek this job. I took it reluctantly. Uh, but I have given this job everything that I have. And I have no regrets whatsoever for having accepted this responsibility. This has been one of the two greatest honors of my life. The job provides incredible opportunities. But it, the truth is, it's easy for it to take over everything in your life. And you can't just let that happen. Because there are other things in life that can be fitting as well. Namely, your time as a husband and a dad, which is the other great honor of my life. Uh, that's why today I am announcing that this year will be my last one as a member of the House. Uh, to be clear, I am not resigning. I intend to full my serve term as I was elected to do. But I will be retiring in January, leaving this majority in good hands with what I believe is a very bright future. Um, it's almost hard to believe, but I have been a member of Congress for almost two decades. This is my 20th year in Congress. Um, my kids weren't even born when I was first elected. Our oldest was 13 years old when I became Speaker. Uh, now all three of our kids are teenagers. One thing I've learned about teenagers is um, their idea of an ideal weekend is not necessarily to spend all of their time with their parents. Uh, what I realize is, if I'm here for one more term, my kids will only have ever known me as a weekend dad. Uh, I just can't let that happen. Uh, so I will be setting new priorities in my life. But I'll also be leaving incredibly proud of what we have accomplished. Um, some of you know my story. My dad died when I was 16. Uh, the, the daughter, the age of my daughter. And I just don't want to be one of those people looking back at my life, thinking I spent more time with my kids, when I know if I spend another term, uh, they will only know me as a weekend father. Uh, so I'm really proud of what we've been able to do. When I took this job, one of my conditions was that we aim high, that we do big things, that we fashion an agenda that we run on that agenda, that we win an election, and that we execute that agenda. I am so proud that that is exactly what we have done and what we are doing right now. We've accomplished so much since then. Probably the two biggest achievements for me are first, the major reform of our tax code for the first time in 36 years, uh, which has already been a huge success for this country, and that's something I've been working on in my entire adult life. Second, something that I got much, much more invested on since becoming Speaker, <coughs> is to rebuild our nation's military. And after tax reform addressing our military readiness crisis, that was a top priority that we got done last month as well. These I see as lasting victories that will make this country more prosperous and more secure for decades to come. There are so many other things that we have gotten done. And of course, I'm going to look back proudly on my days at the Budget Committee and the Ways and Means Committee. Uh, but I don't want to be too sentimental here. Uh, I want to be clear, I'm not done yet. I intend to run through the tape to finish the year. Some of you wonder why I can't just do the normal politician thing, and which is to run and then retire after the election. That is what I'm told is a politically shrewd thing to do. Uh, I considered that. Uh, but just as my conscience is what got me to take this job in the first place, my conscience could not handle going out that way. I pledge to serve the people of Wisconsin, the first district, honorably. And in order to serve the people in my district honorably, I have to serve them honestly. And for me to ask them to vote to re-elect me, knowing that I wasn't going to stay, is not being honest. So I simply cannot do that. So that's why I'm announcing <coughs> this today. Again, I am proud of what this conference has achieved, and I believe its future is bright. The economy is strong. We've given Americans greater confidence in their lives. And I have every confidence that I'll be handing this gavel on to the next Republican Speaker of the House next year. But just to close, I said earlier that I didn't want this job at first. And you, most of you know this. I really actually didn't. But I have to thank my colleagues for giving me this opportunity and this honor. I am really grateful <laughs> for it. I also want to thank the people of Southern Wisconsin for placing their trust in me as their representative for the past 20 years. 
I've tried to bring as much Wisconsin to Washington as I can in that time. It's been a wild ride, but it's been a journey well worth taking to be able to do my part to strengthen the American idea. That pursuit is never ending. Much work remains. But I like to think I have done my part, my little part in history, to set us on a better course. Thank you. Sure. Peter, will you remain as speaker? Yes. You have no plans to call early leadership Correct. elections? Correct. Do you think it's tenable for you guys to have a six-month leadership I election? I do. Uh, look, I know most speakers don't go out on their own terms. Tip O'Neill was probably the last one to do that. Uh, but Harry Reid, as Senate leader this last session, did this. Uh, he announced he wasn't going to run him for again, and he, he stayed on as Senate leader. So, yes, that's, that's what I'm going to do. Hey, Mr. Speaker, you uh, got your long-sought tax cuts and tax reform legislation approved, which you say you'll consider to be your greatest achievement. However, you're not sticking around for its biggest consequence, which is trillion-dollar deficits as far as the Congressional Budget Office's eye can see. Yeah. What's your response to that? So entitlement reform is the one thing that, that, the one other great thing that I've spent most of my career working on. I'm extremely proud of the fact that the House passed the biggest entitlement reform bill ever considered in the House of Representatives. Uh, do I regret the fact that the Senate did not pass this? Yes. Uh, but I feel from all the budgets that I've passed, normalizing entitlement reform, pushing the cause of entitlement reform, and the House passing entitlement reform, I'm very proud of that fact. But yeah, of course, more work needs to be done. And it really is entitlements. That's where the work needs to be done. And I'm going to keep fighting for that. Mr. Speaker, go over here. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, did the chance that you might not be Speaker come November, if Democrats possibly take the House, factor at all no, into this decision? No, none whatsoever, actually. Uh, look, you all know me. I didn't take this job to get the gavel in the first place. I'm not a guy who thinks about it like that. Um, this really was two things. I have accomplished much of what I came here to do, and my kids aren't getting any younger. And if I stay, they're only going to know me as a weekend dad, and that's just something I consciously can't do. And that's really it right there. Mr. Speaker, do you worry about the impact of your announcement on the 2018 midterms and uh, perhaps sending a signal that the House is lost for Republicans? Yeah, I really, I, I, I gave it some consideration, but I really do not believe whether I stay or go in 2019 is going to affect a person's individual race for Congress. I really don't think a person's race for Congress is going to hinge on whether Paul Ryan is Speaker or not. So I really don't think it affects it. Look, if we do our jobs, which we are, we're going to be fine as a majority. Um, I'm grateful for the president to give us this chance to actually get this stuff done. I'm grateful that we have unified government that the president, with his victory, gave us so that we get all these big things done. We're going to have a great record to run on. We have a great economy, great accomplishments, more to do. And I really don't think that the American people are going to want to have the gridlock that the Democrats are promising. So I'm confident we can run to the tape and we can get this done. Uh, on the president, he has been openly talking about uh, firing Bob Mueller, potentially follow, firing uh, the deputy attorney general. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? My thoughts haven't changed. I think they should be allowed to do their jobs. We have a rule of law in this country, and that's a principle we all uphold. Um, I have no reason to believe that that's going to happen. I Why? have assurances that's not, because I've been talking to people in the White House about it. Rachel. As you know, the job has sort of begun to replace you once you retire. Who do you think would be good to lead the conference? Would McCarthy be able to do it, Steve? I have great confidence in this leadership team. That's one thing that I'm really proud of. Uh, obviously, I came with a big gulf uh, in leadership when I came here. I think we have a fantastic leadership team. I have more thoughts on this. I think this is probably not the right time to get into that, but I'll, and I'll, I'll share those thoughts later. We, that election's in November, so it's not something we have to sweat right now. Last question. Yeah. To what extent was your decision influenced by the way President Trump has changed the character of Washington and the character of the Republican Party? Not at all. Uh, like I said, I'm grateful to the President for giving us this opportunity to do big things to get this country on the right track. So the fact that he gave us this ability to get all this stuff done makes me proud of the accomplishments that I've been uh, a contributor to, uh, makes me satisfied that I've, I've made a big difference, and he's given us that chance. So I'm grateful to him for that, and that's really, that's really how I see it. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay.